This meeting is important. It gives us an opportunity, an opportunity not only to present new product, but to exchange ideas, to talk about the future, our future together, to the distributors and the Williams Group of Companies. We've put together seven symposiums from seven disciplines within our company. Key disciplines from the admin, the general manager, talking about the overview of the future from a corporate standpoint. You'll meet with the design groups, pinball video, pinball designers. What, what are we going to do about pinball in the future? What do you as distribution see? What do we as the, the pinball manufacturers see? And how can we together plan for the future and look into the future? This isn't a lesson on us telling you what's what. This is an exchanging of ideas. This is opening lines of communication between each other. Any time you sit down with your customers and talk to them and open lines of communication, you end up with a powerful amount of knowledge, something that will make sure that we can further serve and work with and design product and make sure that we have what the future requires. So this is very important for everybody within our organization. It's a team. Uh, we are going to succeed together. Pure and simple. We have, we'll continue to do so, and uh, hopefully this is a start of a new methodology for us to share thinking that will result in better product with uh, strong return on investment. What I hope to gain from this discussion is to help understand what quality means to the customer and help translate those into things we need to do in the manufacturing process to guarantee it. And I want to make sure that the work we're doing and the resources we have are being employed in the most efficient, creative, effective way possible. I want to know if the stuff we make helps them sell games. And if it does, I want to know how we can help them sell even more games. The distributors are our first line of, of marketing information and they're in contact with the operators and they know what the operators are looking for and what their requirements are and that's what we need to know while we're designing these games and to make our products fit the marketplace. I think this kind of a format will open up some new forward thinking and some new lines of communication between us and the distributors to ultimately help profitably sell parts all the way through the chain and make sure everybody's thinking of part sales as a profit center. Based on some of the feedback that we've gotten in the past, we used to have a separate CPU board, separate sound board. Now everything's incorporated in one board. So those are the kinds of things that we hope to get from our distributors, is feedback with regards to serviceability on our product, with regards to reliability on our product. It's very important that the distributor and manufacturer communicate. If one partner doesn't listen to the other partner or doesn't uh, expound the ideas to the other partner about what is important to him, we will get nowhere. An ideal partnership, just like a marriage, the partners have to talk to each other and have to exchange ideas and together they can get a lot farther than they can an individual by himself. Now if one person walks away from this meeting with a greater understanding, having met somebody the first time and feels that all of a sudden the light's gone on, it's been a success. So what we're going to do today, we're going to see the new product, we're going to exchange some ideas, we're going to talk about the future. But this really is just the beginning. We're opening the lines of communication. We're going to build a solid base. We're going to create a partnership, a partnership for the future, enabling us to provide distribution with great gains. And great gains will enable the distributors, and us to build a path into the 21st century. Off-road has become a much more popular sport. We've worked with Ivan Stewart for a number of years. He's in San Diego, he's been racing here for years, 
he has won more races than any other driver in off-road history. We decided to make Off-Road Challenge because all the other games were very stagnant and dry in that your car stuck to the road on a flat asphalt pavement with no bumps, no jumps, no terrain differences. No two games are alike. That's a big, big deal in this game. Unlike fighting games where you learn a lot of the moves and then you really have to move on to something new, you can have a different experience every time you play this game. It's fun to uh, watch like four kids get in and just have a great time, sit there with their stacks of quarters and uh, yelling at each other. It was fantastic to work with a company uh, with, the, with the amount of dedication that Midway's got to making the number one game. There are eight trucks, I like to call them characters in the game. Each behave a little bit differently. There are lower center of gravities. There are bigger, more massive cars. All the handling is just a little bit different. One of the best features of these vehicles is that you can power slide. Plain and simple, you can get into a curve and you can slide your vehicle and it becomes a lot of fun. It actually feels like a real off-road race vehicle that you're driving. We started with the Mojave track, which is a desert course. There's the Baja course, you're going along the beaches of Baja, California. You've got the El Paso track going through the old ghost towns of El Paso and Texas. And Pikes Peak going through uh, some snow-covered mountains. One of the favorites and most fun is Las Vegas. It's also one of the most challenging. It's got a spoof of Area 51, and then you get to wind your way through a mine. That's just an incredibly exciting area. We offer Off-Road Challenge in a multi-link kit. Operators can link together two, three, or four machines. We have seen the highest earnings with the four-way quad links. Well, there's uh, bonus items all over the course that you can pick up. There's money bags, which can be used later on in the speed shop. There's nitros. There's the uh, helmets, which help keep your car from getting crushed. The Speed Shop is a real unique feature in our game. Essentially, it's a place where you can buy upgrades if you do your um, speed, your tires, acceleration, uh, nitros, or your engine. We are seeing a phenomenal amount of earnings from the Speed Shop, because not only can the player spend the money he's won on the track, he can also add in quarters at any time and beef up each item. There's a tremendous amount of realism just in that alone. The better driver you are, the more money you win, the more recognition you get, the more sponsors you get, so now you have get to get a better race car. Anybody can come into this game and have a good time. Easy to learn, uh, but very hard to master this game. It's got a broad appeal. The computer programmers were able to get in the realism of off-road racing that I had hoped they could. I think it's fantastic. Every time I see the game, I'm proud to be associated with it. I think it's going to be a, a real hit. Approximately two years ago, our distributor and operator committee strongly suggested to us to develop a product that would have applications to the street operator and the street location. So at that time, we investigated looking into uh, darts, and we looked into pool, and we looked into jukeboxes, but the actual product line that really rose to the top was the countertop product. It made a lot of sense for Midway to consider that also because of our experience with countertop and touch type products with our gaming division and with cards and the like. So we went ahead and put together a team of engineers and by June of 1996 we had our first units out on test and at distribution levels and we commenced production in September of, the, of that year. After production started, we completely had underestimated the demand for the product. In the last 10 months, we have shipped in excess of 8,000 units on a worldwide basis in six different languages. Um, but just as much as we underestimated the demand from a manufacturing side, we un clearly underestimated the demand from a game design standpoint. Um, unlike the typical Midway product, which involves uh, an 18 to 24 month development cycle and a cost of four to five million dollars, this particular product line demands 
new innovative street type of games every three to four months. Uh, in order to do that now, we have put in place a team of engineers consisting of four programmers and four artists which have nothing but the prime directive to design and develop new innovative top earning games for the Touchmaster product line. The first thing we have to do is build upon a successful foundation that we've already started and that involves designing successful top earning innovative game concepts that appeal to the marketplace that the Touchmaster goes into. Whether it be games developed upon our most successful past history type of games such as Centipede or Millipede or Missile Command or Joust and doing updated versions of those or whether it be taking a licensed theme such as Tetris or Monopoly or Playboy, developing games around those particular licenses exclusive for the Midway Touchmaster product, or whether it be taking a tournament type of approach to game design. For instance, we are presently working with the Nanny people and we'll be introducing a product that's Nanny compatible this coming September. And we've also been looking into developing a Williams distributor exclusive type game tournament network uh, type of application. And fourthly, and most importantly, really is new original game designs and continuing to develop of that that appeals to the type of player that we're looking to market this particular product to. Part of the initial success of the Williams product line was its innovative package design. We are presently redesigning our upright version and we are working on a slant top version. And we'll be showing sketches as part of our roundtable discussions to our distributors and asking for their input in terms of what they feel the direction this product design should take. Within the next 12 months, you'll see the introduction of a totally new hardware system, a system that will be capable of having its software downloaded via phone lines or upgradable as easy as changing a CD-ROM disk. Not only will the system be technically advanced in terms of its graphical 3D presentations and its hardware capabilities and blow away the competition, but it's our intention to have it cost less than anything that the competition has out today. To sum it all up, this is going to be one heck of a year for our Touchmaster product line and we're really excited about getting all these innovations into production. starts off as a good versus evil thing back in the ancient times. The basic object of the game in playing Medieval Madness is to destroy the King of Pain. He's the evil warrior who's taken over the land, he's taken over all the castles. Fire! I am the Duke of Bourbon! <gasps> the King of Pain has five evil men that are under his is leadership. And each of these guys is a, is kind of a humorous tone. Um, the Duke of Bourbon, who is kind of this drunk guy who you're, you're trying to blow out of the air. There's the Earl of Ego, who's this real pompous guy who you just love to destroy his castle because he's so annoying. I am the Earl of Ego, and I am far superior to you. The one thing that uh, your beginner player, the first thing they'll see is the exploding castle. And this, this brings a lot of excitement to the game and keeps people interested. You have to hit the drawbridge and the drawbridge will come down. And then once that's down, there's a gate inside. And so you gotta hit the gate. And once the gate pops up, you can shoot into the castle and then you see this great show of the castle physically blowing apart on the playfield. Stop it! Another fun feature of the game is the trolls. These guys surprise a lot of people the first time you play because they're, they're hiding under the playfield normally and when you make the right shot, they'll pop up from the playfield. Trolls rule! So you're trying to hit them three times to destroy them and then they go back down. And all along this, the trolls will taunt you and, and say things to you and... Ow! That didn't hurt a bit! There's a big dragon over the ramp and the whole concept on there is to make the ramp three times and then you're able to shoot way up into the back into the damsel tower. And they're asking you to save me, save me. This is like totally medieval! Over on the left side when you fall into the catapult, you get, you get to throw projectiles at the castle. And when you fall in there enough, you actually get to pick the projectile. So there's one of five different humorous things, like a cat and a bowling ball, that you get to throw at the castle and see it explode. Fire! If 
people enjoy laughing as they play the game. So if you look closer at the game, you'll see all these little elements, like the cow flying in the back glass, or the troll wearing gym shoes. You know, there's, there's all these humorous, wacky things going on in the kingdom. Attack from Mars was a, was a really strong earning pin last year, and we're, we're showing in our early testing that Medieval Madness is earning even better than Mars. So we're really looking at this being a blockbuster game. We've created a new game at Midway. We could tell you about its new Zeus chip and how it renders 1.2 million polygons per second. We could tell you about the road tour and the thousands of fans that waited hours to play. We could tell you about all the national press coverage, about the millions of hits at its website, about the lifelike 3D characters and amazingly real backgrounds, about a new weapons feature that will revolutionize fighting games. We could tell you it's more intense. But what we can tell you is that it represents change. Mortal Kombat 4 is about change. Combat has become an, an industry upon itself. Uh, every version of Mortal Kombat that has been introduced into the marketplace has become a blockbuster. The thing that really astounds us is that um, this one arcade game that we made in 1992 has managed to spawn off all these different forms of media. The Mortal Kombat movie uh, has made over $100 million worldwide. The Mortal Kombat home games have sold uh, 15 million copies. The arcade game alone has earned what's estimated at over a billion dollars. And uh, this fall, with the Mortal Kombat sequel movie being released and Mortal Kombat 4, it just it really seems like the legacy continues to grow. Mortal Kombat 4 uh, is the first 3D Mortal Kombat. I don't think we would have even done a Mortal Kombat 4 had we not known that we could do the kind of advancements that we did. Up till now, no other technology was capable of truly presenting the fast-paced action necessary in a Mortal Kombat game. And the difference with Mortal Kombat 4 is it utilizes a 3D graphics engine, so the game is entirely done with 3D computer graphics. We have developed an extremely uh, sophisticated uh, graphics chip, which we call the Zeus chip. It's capable of generating in excess of a million, 200,000 four-sided polygons per second. To put that into perspective, I understand that's approximately 10 times more powerful than the Nintendo 64 system and we're pushing around so many polygons and the detail is so incredible and the realism is so incredible, but that still wasn't enough. We, we still had to take the game a bit further. So we decided to change everything. We decided to change the presentation of the graphics, the gameplay, add completely new elements to it all. What we did was we introduced weapons, and, and, and weapons are in other 3D fighting games, but not in the way that weapons are in Mortal Kombat 4. Get up! The speed of Mortal Kombat 4 and the way that you can drop a weapon, your opponent can pick up your weapon and use it against you is so incredible and adds so much to the fighting. When we designed the Zeus chip, we designed it for, for extraordinary performance, but at a very low cost relative to any other 3D product on the marketplace.
The Mortal Kombat 4 Road Tour is something that's never been done before in the video game world. We're taking Mortal Kombat 4 on the road to select cities around the country, and we're providing players a sneak preview, an exclusive sneak preview of the game a full month before anyone else in the world will see it. This is a product that will cause the kids to be standing five deep waiting to play because it is so much more exciting than anything that's in the market right now or anything that's been introduced in the market over the past few years. I'm here to play Mortal Kombat 4. It's just because it's Mortal Kombat, everybody's going to play it. I wanted to be the first to play it. They're all excited. They've been obviously waiting for MK4 for a long time, and now they're close to getting it. And I, as we can see, the turnout is just fantastic. really surprised by the amount of uh, media coverage we've received on this tour. Uh, the guys from Midway uh, Games brought over Mortal Kombat 4. This thing isn't even in arcades yet. And the kids love this game so much that they follow the trucks around the country when they give demonstrations. It's like the Grateful Dead tour of video games. I've been to every single one of the stops so far. People are already asking when we're going to have it. You know, they want to know the day and the time so they can come and play. So it's been incredible. Our website, mk4.com, has gotten millions of hits since we first put it up on July 10th. Uh, to give you an idea of how much activity it's gotten, in one day alone we've gotten 500,000 hits on the webpage. The media has really jumped onto this whole thing and um, we've seen quite a few stories from all over the United States. From WBAL-TV, you're watching 11 News at 5. Baltimore is one of a few select cities getting a sneak preview of a new video arcade game. It's Mortal Kombat 4. Kansas City 5 stands for And the new sequel, Mortal Kombat 4, is expected. Live from Northern California's largest the latest Mortal Kombat game. Here to tell us what's new at Midway Games is Chairman and CEO Neil Nicastro, and he joins us. You're watching Fox 4 News Mortal. Latest improvement on the popular video game Mortal Kombat. The news for Portland, Vancouver, and the Pacific. The kids were crammed inside today, testing their skills against a new version version of a popular video. Now, Boston's 10 p.m. news leader. The new arcade game is causing quite a sensation. Mortal Kombat 4 is debuting in Boston to hundreds of aficionados at Good Time Billiards in Somerville. And as I found tonight, they were having a good time. This is the immortal Mortal Kombat 4. Touted as the fastest, most realistic 3D video game ever created. It's pretty good. It's come a long way since I played Atari way back in 76. This one's a, a huge uh, step forward over the third one. It's definitely uh, more fluid motion, better animation. You can tell the technology's gotten a lot better. This is Mortal Kombat 4's debut in Boston, part of a nationwide sneak preview tour before its release. And anyone who pedals this game can see that it attracts quite a crowd. Its makers use state-of-the-art motion capture technology with martial artists and actors to maximize realistic action. One good thing about having Mortal Kombat 4 in an arcade like this is that you don't have to wait to play any other games. For instance, you don't see a horde of people waiting behind me salivating to play with Sammy the Clown at his flying coin circus with the amazing bonus wagon. wonderfully positive reaction everywhere we go. People are amazed at the difference between MK3 and MK4. They love the 3D. They really love the fact that you can take away a weapon from your opponent and use it against him. The classic characters have their old moves back and a lot of new ones. Weapons are a great feature. It looks better. It runs smoother. It's, the effects are great. I like this one a little better because it's a little more dark and gothic. This game is real fast. It, it moves. It's, it's real quick on the ground. I think they did a real good job. The backgrounds are awesome. The backgrounds, that's thats what makes it. It's definitely the best fighting game I've played so far. I'm going to go get back in line right now and play it again. I'm going to plan on being here until 7 o'clock until they take the machines away. From what we saw inside, we, this is going to be a great promotion and this is a great way to get some of the major locations the game early. And I think this type of promotion really adds to our sales effort and player awareness. If the players are aware, the operators have no choice but to buy. I don't think there was any question that I'd have MK4 in my facility. It's a matter of how many and how many kids are going to come in here and play it. It's going to kick some serious butt. It's going to be the best 3D fighter probably out there. That was really cool. Really impressive. Dude, man, this game rules. Yeah, I love it. Oh, that rocks. It's a great video game. Best one yet. I'm not a freak about it, but I enjoy it. Awesome. It's great. Excellent. It's hot.
Mortal Kombat 4 is the mother of all fighting games. Mortal Kombat 4 is the pinnacle of all Mortal Kombat games that have preceded it. It is the most sophisticated, fast-paced, uh, beautiful uh, fighting game that has ever been created.